Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon, and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. In the last episode, we were able to send a signal from the ground and lock our Apollo transceiver on it. Moreover, we turned the ranging function on and had the Earth stone turned around and sent back to the ground station. And we were elated to receive the tone back after a round trip to the moon. Er, I mean, a round trip to the other end of my big wooden table. But for us, that was as good as the moon. Locked, okay. Two ranging on. I'm going to modulate Earth and it should have it should turn it around. I have no idea how much I need to modulate it. Oh perfect. Wow. However, this double locked link uses a relatively uncommon analog modulation scheme called narrow angle phase modulation or PM for short. We did not have a PM receiver, so we built a makeshift receiver with an HP mixer and an HF ham radio using FM. You see, PM and FM modulation are mathematically related, and FM is a workable substitute for transmitting a test tone. But for the real signal and data, we need a true PM receiver. And actually, we think we have one. We believe this test box here is one of the original PM test receivers used by NASA at the Cape. But there is a catch, we have zero documentation about it. Zippo, zilch, nada, nothing. All we have are the markings on the front panel. So we are essentially flying blind with this one. But you know us, that won't prevent us from trying to revive it in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing, Mike? So we just stacked the PM receiver on top of our transponder mount, and uh, looks very proper. Yeah, we haven't really done anything with it, but we're going to plug it in. Yeah, we just went over a few things. Not much, right? The connector is just dead here. The end connector, so we'll have to replace that. Uh, and we had the funny fuses at the back. Right, that one. It's a fuse with a neon bulb, I think. And this had broken off, so we found one on eBay. So, just power it up, see how many bulbs are dead. <laughs> <laughs> if the thing blows, there's nothing much we can do because there is um, not much data on it. If, if something is wrong with it, then we can go indoors because I, I think they are. Uh, yeah. Discrete electronics, but those are really pretty easy to get into. Hopefully, nothing is wrong. But yeah, the power supply, we'll hope, is good. Wow, taking the yeah, taking the power out of this would be difficult. <laughs> so yeah, there are two school of thoughts. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's plus one fifteen and minus fifteen, and there's a very little zero V in there. I can hardly see. And it could be minus 150, 150, but I think it's a, if it was there before, they, they erased it on purpose. But there is the high voltage sticker over there. So. And there's a high voltage sticker. And then those, uh, we were worried if they were electrolytics that we should check, but it's very, it's a few microfarads. Uh, 100 microfarads plus or minus 3%. Yeah, so both the size and the fact that it's plus minus 3% tell me those are not uh, electrolytics that we should worry about maybe okay in in uh, in apollo hardware we trust <laughs> uh, well we never had a power supply go bad right so not yet that's my contribution of the day i cleaned the connector got a piece of 3m <laughs> stuff and mm -hmm. stuff it in the inside so it was just surface corrosion which is good I'm going to plug it in all right Watching it. Okay, here we go. 
Nothing. Yes, something. Yes, yeah, so we got out of lock. I got the signal strength that's very high, which shouldn't happen. MGC. Okay, there's live. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Automatic game control. Okay. Okay, so we have one bomb that doesn't work. This one. Same thing, well, but that doesn't work. Loop control, open, close. Okay, we have lots of balls to change. Mike has printed a 3D printed a bulb extraction tool. Yep, just a, a real simple SLA print that. Well, real simple. Uh, it's, <laughs> well, it's, well, it's super, it's, it needs to be super thin. So, in theory, just push it in, tilt it sideways a little bit. Pool yeah, it's ball. so hard. Why didn't they put the good? Uh, there it's you go. Bulb. And it is a three thirty. Three thirty. That's what I thought it was. Okay. I bought myself a whole bunch of three thirties on eBay, I think. So we have a better Christmas show now. Ooh! Ah! Oh! Nice. Very good. Only thing I haven't tested is in lock because this isn't a button, it's just a display. It's, okay, okay. But, all right. Yep. So let me work a little bit on the configuration over here. So, frequency generator here 2.287.5. So the first test is simple. Feed it an unmodulated carrier exactly at the Apollo S-band carrier frequency from our HP microwave generator. And we should get some indication of received signal at least, and some locking action at best. But we saw absolutely nothing. Let's do minus 40 dB, and then uh, probably not this one. Okay, we don't know AGC. Well, that, that's only for manual. Oh, manual gain control. Um, okay. I'm at minus 40 dBm. We check that we actually give it some signal, so out of this comes that. So that's correct. That's kind of smack in the middle of the PM transmit at minus 30 dBm, which should be plenty, plenty, plenty. We we check the power supplies and they are like 15.0 volts, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just smack on it. 15.00 so. for the one that I checked. Uh, minus 14.97. Okay, well that's correct. So the correct. purple is minus 15. Yep, 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 yep. 12, 12 volts. 12, okay. Perfect. So now that. Uh, VCC manual control, so you're supposed to be able to control Huh, you're supposed to be able to control this, but it don't do a thing. It's not receiving anything. It could be as simple as, as our connector. So we, we then what we have to do is we have to go in and trace. Do we get a VCO? Do we get, a, no, we should be able to get something at the mixer, right. right? The two inputs and see if we have a different signal. So I first want to poke at the area just behind the front panel, which has the microwave circuitry leading to the first mixer, making sure we don't lose the signal somewhere in there. That's, that's the good thing with the old microwave that you can tell from the cabling. Input goes here. This is the big generator. Comes out, goes in the bottom, which I can tell from the top is just a bandpass filter and this is into what I think is the mixer back there here is would be so this actually I can tell because written on it says LO local oscillator so there's the local oscillator bandpass filter 2.1.3 gigahertz and that goes from hey here we go is our VCO actually this is a multiplier the VCO is here at 23 mega, si mega cycles, megahertz, as we say now, and it's multiplied a couple of times to get into the gigahertz regime, so it should come out here. So we eventually reversed engineered the whole architecture 
uh, and it's a double conversion receiver. It comes in the microwave, gets converted to 50 megahertz, and then gets converted gets converted to 10 megahertz. But what I am trying to check is this section here to see if I get anything at all. So. On the first mixer, I should get uh, the 2.2875 signal coming from the downlink. And then the local oscillator should be at the exact same frequency, plus minus 50 megahertz. I'm not sure which one is going to be. Uh, and out should come the 50 megahertz in the rest of the receiver. And we see evidence of that, that we have a, a 23 megahertz VCO and it's written on it time 96. And if you multiply 23 megahertz by time 96 and you get into that frequency range here. So I'm going to check single here, single there. And then if everything works, I should get some 50 megahertz out here. So we are looking at the signal as it comes in here in that attenuator. Then I disconnected it from the filter goes to the RF analyzer and I am moving the big attenuator button here and woo -hoo -hoo. so that's working signals making it till there so I'm now testing the other side of the mixer um, so I've disconnected the local oscillator comes through here and I expect to be a lot of power maybe 10 dBm ish so I put a 10 dB attenuator, I put a 20 dB attenuator, and then it goes in here, and mic, and it's right there. So this is, um, this is, so it's 200 megahertz off, so I, yeah, 100, huh. I would have expected it to be 50 megahertz off and it's way far because if I read over here right, it says 50 megacycle mixer and 10 megacycle AGC amp my reading of that is that the output of the mixer is 50 expected output and then it's a double conversion so it goes and here it's mixed down to 10 but here I am four and a half I'm 90 megahertz off do you think that there's any chance that this is something that they changed when they were doing whatever modification they were doing so Mike is onto something there is evidence that the boxes have been modified after the Apollo life some mods are documented on stickers on the modules themselves some we can actually tell by looking at the notes and the components. Others we can see from the front panel labels. For example, this 1.024 subcarrier button is an Apollo subcarrier. But the 768 on the left, that is not an Apollo subcarrier. So God knows what other mods could be lurking in there. But before we go there, there could be a much simpler explanation why this would be at the wrong frequency. Oh, it could be that this is for the LEM and not for the command module. Let me check the LEM frequencies. So the frequency of a local oscillator is 2.1969, so 2.197. And this is a CM and the LEM is only uh, 5 megahertz lower so that's not going to make it <laughs> my guess is that it's been reworked it's not apollo anymore some kind of other aircraft yeah, spacecraft explain the 768 yeah there. this has been monkeyed with too has been yes. opened yeah. maybe a shuttle thing maybe it's the shuttle <laughs> we don't see the frequency of the shuttle <laughs> i don't or or some kind of other spacecraft secret, yeah or secret government Program. yeah so let's so but but I, I i just bring that i just do that plus 50 right and uh try that at the input and see if i can lock it right. oh yeah we can do that okay so i've changed my frequency 15 megahertz down get more luck. power you want to come this way yeah, so you can see all right power and 
Pop up open. Yes! Whoa. That. Okay. That was an interesting sound. Yeah. Okay, so let's go a little longer. Close. Okay. Let me see. But that's definitely it. So we got something. Is it a relay? Yeah, the, the out of lock is flickering as you're doing that. Okay, so it's trying to lock. And we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have. Okay, so I should see something tuning. I'm on frequency here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. So I'm, I'm locking it, it receives it. Okay, he's, I'm under manual control for the VCO. Okay, so this works. Yeah, locked. Oh. All right. I need to replace that ball, apparently. Okay, so we got it. It's just for a different frequency than for the Apollo system has been changed yeah. and we have a working receiver let's see if it can stay locked it, it's not very sensitive they just didn't go for the same sensitivity as the uh, Apollo receiver at all mm -hmm. it's on the ground it is going to be bombarded with power there's, there's something that you can use with 30 dB of attenuation well that's working great out of lock Back into lock. Sweet. So Mike has replaced the lamp and now we can have the green light when it's locked. Then I go far too far out of the lock. Oh it follows it quite yeah, there you go. Off, off, off. And you can see the FM tuning, I'm getting closer, that capture range. Receive the signal. Ooh, it's pretty delicate. It's pretty sensitive, huh? Now, so now you're not back in lock, my friend. Why? Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's trying to get it. It's gonna get it. It's gonna get it. There you go. Oh, it's slow of the control loop. We have it, but correct. It needs maybe 20 dBm. And then well, the knobs are doing approximately what they should. And 2.246908 gigahertz frequency. Yes. So we just have to sort of reverse engineer that stuff. And then we bring, bring, bring it back to where it should be. Yeah. I mean, lots of things work. The, the, the mixer works, the multiplier works, the AGC works, the loop works, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> it's a bit slow, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> So Mike, you made an interesting discovery. So this is, it's written on, it's the VCO mm -hmm. and it's at the wrong frequency and we're like, oh, how do we change the frequency? And then ever curious, Mike, wonder what's underneath this. So let's take out these screws and see. Yeah, so it gets wobbly and kind of tough to pull, but if you take it up carefully, We'll yeah, have to fish that out. And look what we found. We found a crystal. So that is probably the thing we have to change to get this thing you no know, uh, back at the frequency was supposed to be probably yeah at, at, at in the first place. And the problem is that uh, I suspect that if you change the crystal it won't oh, jump back at the frequency all by itself. Yeah, there's all of these knobs. <laughs> yeah, so that you have to readjust the VCO and you have to readjust the multiplier and we don't know how these work. So that's going to be a problem. But we looked inside and it's a bunch of transistors. So it's potentially reverse engineerable. Okay, reverse engineering the VCO and its multiplier as well as figuring out what type of custom crystal we have to order will be left as an exercise for another video. In the meantime, we are elated that we could make our mystery NASA PM receiver work at all. See you in the next episode!